All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thanks for joining me today. As always, my name is Jesse and I am the host here on this channel. And as you can tell, I'm doing a little bit of a different format with the episode today. I'm not standing in front of a camera. I'm actually just recording the audio and uh, giving you guys some various imagery uh, to look at here on the YouTube channel. But I wanted to try this format out to see if it you know, translates better over to the uh, podcast. So we'll see how this goes. Let me know down in the description of the video that you're watching if you like it. Uh, comment wherever this is coming out, whether it be on Facebook, Twitter, um, and the podcast, I guess, because that's the only other platforms that I have other than YouTube. So hail and welcome. Um, if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That button is right down below on your screen. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure that you click the bell notifications and then you will be alerted every time that I upload new content. All right, so today's video, today's discussion is something that has been on my mind for just a little while. Um, on, on Well, it's been on my mind for quite a while, but on and off. Um, but it's been on my mind more heavily recently um, for like maybe the last week or two. And that is the subject that I want to talk about today is that about where we see uh, certain either organizations or people uh, taking measures to codify heathenry. Now some of you may be wondering what I mean by that and um, where my stance is coming from is as, may, as, as, as some of you may know, uh, my approach to heathenry is not 100% hardcore, you know, historical reconstruction approach. I, I'm not a hardcore recon heathen. I've said it many times on my channel, but I'm also not one of these, you know, kind of just uh, neo-pagan trying to slap, you know, the Norse aesthetic onto modern day neo-pagan um, approaches. That's not me. Um, and it's not the way I do things, uh, and that's not how I heathen. However you heathen, and however the people you know heathen, and, and the people that you, you know, kind of uh, tie weird with and share your life with, um, that's their business, your business, you know, your hall, your call. Um, to sort of reference a very famous catchphrase uh, from a good friend of mine, Mr. Eric Shervin, uh, over at the Ravens Call. If you haven't yet, please check out his uh, content over on YouTube as well. But um, anyway, the thing that I wanted to talk about today with regards to codifying heathenry or any attempts to do so is probably one of the biggest and most popular attempts um, and, and, and gestures to codify heathenry is the infamous, you know, nine noble virtues. Um, I've talked a bit about my opinion of the nine noble virtues on this channel if you are watching this on youtube check out the uh, annotated cards that you'll uh, see occasionally pop up one of those uh, will be a card to direct you to that video where i talk about the nine noble virtues we're going to refer to them as the nnv uh, going forward so make sure that you if you haven't yet already you know check out that video um, i already kind of go into what i think about the nnv um, but to sort of summarize it um, here for this video, um, I don't necessarily think that they're horrible. You know, they are, uh, if you've not seen them before, um, as you can see here on your screen, it is, you know, courage, truth, honor, fidelity, discipline, hospitality, self-reliance, industriousness, uh, and perseverance. Now, these are all great, you know, moral codes, right, or, or, or things that um, you could apply to your life and that can be applied to almost any walk of life, not even a, a heathen uh, view or a heathen uh, approach to, to living, um, that will probably make, a, make you look like a, an upstanding individual and make you look pretty, you know, morally upright. But are they inherently heathen? No. No, they're not. And I've talked about that in the other, in, in my previous video, you know, about uh, the NNV. What the NNV are, are a very, very modern construct, right? Um, and they are, uh, you know, moral codes of conduct that are loosely and, and kind of uh, more or less 
pulled from some sources uh, where a lot of Norse heathens you know, draw their, their information from, namely uh, the Havamal, and um, uh, there's another uh, poetic uh, Edda, uh, a poem in the poetic Edda, uh, Sigdrifamal. So between the Havamal and, and Sigdrifamal uh, poems uh, in, in the poetic Edda, you know, somebody uh, back in the 70s um, codified this collective, I, I, I call them buzzwords, you know, um, and they were, they were codified by the Odinic Rite. So there's connections uh, to that organization that have, you know, a lot of, of fascist and, and racist and, and bigoted approaches to things. So the association that the NNV have to the Odinic Rite also leaves a bit of a sour taste in, a, in, in many heathens' uh, mouths, right? Myself included. Now, again, like I said, are the NNV um, necessarily wrong? Obviously, no. It's great to be courageous, to speak the truth, to maintain honor, fidelity, discipline, be hospitable host and guest, you know, uh, things uh, that you can do to be self-reliant, uh, the things that you can do to be industrious and to persevere. Like, these are all great things. They are not inherently heathen. Um, and the problem that I particularly have is that this, these moral codes, or any attempt to codify heathenry, right? And when I say codify, I am talking about the um, attempt to, you know, set up a code or a law uh, or to make a digest of and, and, and arrange in a systematic sort of way um, any sort of, you know, law. Um, now, I'm going to be talking a little bit later on in this video as we, as we move along that there is a place for law. There is a definite place for law in heathenry, but I don't think that it fits into this codification method that has been adopted very recently um, by a lot of Ossetror or, or, or modern-day heathens that are trying to find their way um, in heathenry. It's, again, it's, it's a nice kind of thing to think about when you think, you know, about the, the, these moral codes, but um, they're, they're, they are very, very modern, um, taken from very, very questionable uh, characters. You know, the sources that they come from, yes, they may be coming from places like the Havamal and Sigurd Fumal and, and those, you know, um, what we would consider possibly primary sources for, for heathenry, but they're the connection that they have to the Odinic Rite and, and, and the racist uh, connections and all that is just, it's not great. So anyway, getting away from that, I think I've beat that horse to death uh, well enough. You understand um, where I'm coming from here. I do want to talk about, though, that, um, you know, to have law, to have something to, to, to focus on, um, moral codes, that sort of thing, um, it's, it's not even so much moral codes. It's, it's the law is, is, is something that you have to have a, a, at least a, a basic understanding of even worldview um, to, to, to get what it is that I'm saying. And we're going to take a look at that um, a little bit in depth now as we go into this uh, further discussion. All right, so now as I've, I've you know, talked many times on this channel before, I've made reference to a book um, that I highly recommend anybody who's wanting to get into heathenry and take it seriously. Um, a very, very helpful book for me to, to help develop my own worldview was a book written by Eric Wodening called We Are Our Deeds. Okay, and what it does is it goes over some of the, the moral and ethics and things that existed pre-Christian times with the Germanic people of Northern Europe. Um, so one of the things that um, stands out to me when we're talking about codifying heathenry, right? Should we have these buzzwords? Should we have these things that you say that everybody, no matter what approach to heathenry they have, um, is something that they should be following? Is that even a thing? Can that be done within heathenry? And I don't think it can. I don't think that we can globalize and make heathenry something so generic and universal that it can be summed up into nine buzzwords or nine moral codes of conduct, right? We have to understand um, a 
and, and have an understanding of, of a heathen worldview. And Eric Weldening's book, We Are Our Deeds, does help in educating us about that. One of the things that we learn about um, was the concept of things like law, but the, and, and things such as, or words such as um, sin. And I want to talk a bit about sin in, from a heathen context because it's going to help um, kind of bring into, uh, it, it's going to help relate everything. It's going to help correlate everything to what I'm saying about right now and, and where I think law fits into uh, to heathenry. So sin has a place in heathenry. And, and for a lot of newer heathens that have maybe come from Christianity and they have a, a certain view about what sin is, you know, maybe they have a, a, a preconceived meaning of the word and, and maybe they're, you know, reading a bunch of books now uh, as they're getting involved in heathenry that have been, you know, penned by authors who really have no interest in the actual truth of heathenry. They're just, you know, either trying to make a buck or, or, or writing uh, their own feelings. Um, it is something that exists and, and has a place in heathenry, talking about sin, right? Um, some folks may, that are new to heathenry, may perhaps be dismayed to learn that while the heathen approach to, to sin kind of differs, the fundamental aspects of it and what it means remains the same, right? Because to sin, from a heathen perspective, it is to transget, transgress or, or, or to um, go against divine law, right? And because if you are violating divine law, it, the, the, uh, the compliance with which, right, the compliance with divine law is what is vital to the foundations of a, of a healthy and long and strong surviving tribe. All right, we're going to get into some of the uh, dynamic of, of, of heathenry and that it is tribal at its core and that it's at the backbone of heathenry is, is, is tribal uh, approach. It's only when a tribe really begins to fully um, pick up and grasp the sacred elements present in the roots of their respective uh, inner circles or inner yards or inangard. Um, and what that means is when a beneficial relationship with the sacred or with the divine, with our gods, um, can be um, secured and, 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 and maintained, right? So, as order is established, as things are established with a tribe of this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it, the anatomy of that tribal body begins to take place. The, the, the shape and the, and the form of the tribe is becoming evident. Those customs that are, are you know, set up by the people that are uh, developing that tribe or how the tribe is being developed, as, that, as those customs begin to, you know, ossify into the bones of, of tribal law, it's going to allow those dwelling in the tribe to continue forward in a harmonious sort of way. Everybody's going to understand that this is how the tribe functions and this is how our society, our, our, our collective, our group is going to function uh, successfully, right? Every issue that arises, every problem that's encountered, um, if there's a law set in place and if there's a law that's created to address and deal with it in a good and, and, and uh, you know, wholesome sort of way, uh, within the tribe, then, then the bones of the tribe will reflect the structure and pattern of, an, uh, of its unrelenting nature of, of primal law, right? Which is where we start thinking about things like orlog, the things that have been laid down that layer in the well from our, uh, from our ancestors that we're, that we're pulling from. So by doing this, um, the tribe is, is at, a, at its core, it's, it's imbuing the bones or these laws, as it were, with some sort of, with, with, a, with an element of sacredness. Um, it, puts, it puts them in connection with the divine. So law has to be developed, and that's where this, the, the difference between these buzzwords, these, these, what I'm saying, codifying heathenry, I don't mean that there, there, there shouldn't be law, there shouldn't be order, there shouldn't be, you know, those sorts of things, but what I'm saying is that that law and that order is developed at the tribal level. It's not something that is just universally spouted out with these, you know, courage, honor, fidelity, you know, industriousness, these, these just basic moral uh, codes of conduct that, 
you know, didn't have to exist in our achieving times for society to function. They just, they just were that by, by doing what they did and, and being the way they were. So when, when tribal law is developed, then we have what comes uh, from law is, is through the traditions, the things that binds the tribe. It's kind of like the sinew that allows the tribe to live in peace with their laws, right? Those traditions, those, those uh, things that exist um, and that have existed for so long, if, if, if a tribe has been around for so, for so very long, that ore log, again, that we were talking about before, that layer in the well that is being pulled from. Um, so again, the thu becomes like that sinew or that binding agent that, that allows a tribe to live in peace um, with those laws without breaching or, or, or breaking any of them. It's the custom that, that is so flexible that it allows the body of the tribe to not shatter, right? It's not so, um, I guess, stringent or, or, or fragile that it's easily broken. There, there's some flexibility, hence the, 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 the analogy that I'm giving of like sinew, right? Um, so when law and thu take form within the tribe, there's an undeniable existence. You, you, you can't ignore this, the, these, these concepts of, of, of things that are good and evil, what, it, what would be considered sin for the tribe if, if committed and what would be considered right. Um, so those things are, they, they did just kind of get formed and, and become part of, uh, they, they become apparent to everything. If it's good and right and if it's what benefits the tribe and allows the tribe to thrive, then to violate anything that, that anything that would hurt that is, is to be considered sin. And so the law, right, or the thu, um, is developed at the tribal level. It's, it's not, again, something that just is, you know, broadly, universally uh, kind of given uh, by, you know, a, a nice Facebook post or a fancy, you know, plaque that you can hang on your wall and, you know, say, well, these are the codes that I live by. And it's, you know, you're, you're limiting yourself at that point. It's like, well, I would hope that you as an individual are industrious enough and that you as an individual are, you know, um, maintaining your honor and, 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 and a good reputation with your folks and that, that you are disciplined to control uh, certain things in your life and to not, you know, and, and to also be, you know, a hospitable guest or hospitable host. Like, again, these are all things that, sure, they're great, but they're not. I, I, I keep going back to this, just saying it. It's, it's all they are is they're buzzwords, right? It's something to just make you feel good about it. So when I, you know, talk about in this, in the title of this video that, you know, codifying heathenry, don't do it, you know, what I mean by that is that there's, there's more to moral code, it, there, there's more to it than just those, those individual words, right? And I don't care really how it gets changed, you know, there's, I've, I've seen some um, things online going around where, you know, people want to take away from the NNV or, or, or go, get away from the NNV because of its, you know, connections with the Odinic Rite and that's where they were codified and that's the connection that they have. They want to get away from that and yet they come up with a whole new set of nine virtues or nine, you know, things to, to live by, codes of conduct, moral codes or whatever. It's like, so you're, you're, you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're, you're exchanging one for something that really doesn't have any greater or better, or better value, you know? All right, so cool, you get a neat little picture to hang on your wall and, and, and point at to people and say, yeah, that's what I live by. Okay, well, what do you need a plaque on, that, on the wall to, to, to say that? And, you know, without, you know, naming names or, or calling any, anybody out, if it works for you, if, it, if that's what works for your tribe, for your group, for your organization, for whatever, then great. If, if, if that's what works for you. It doesn't, it doesn't sit with me as being an effective approach um, to heathenry. Because I, my, my particular view and the way I um, approach heathenry and, and some of the other people around and in my life that approach heathenry is that it's, it's, it's delving deeper into a worldview. It's not just, 
yeah, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be self-reliant. I'm going to be, you know, hospitable. It's those are all things that become part of who we are as we cultivate and, and develop and, and nourish our worldview. So when I say in the title again, when I say in this video that it's, you know, don't, don't codify heathenry, we shouldn't be codifying heathenry. To that end, I would say that if it, you know, again, if it works for you and, is, and if it fits your approach, hey, who am I to say it's wrong? You know, it's your haul, your call. Not my haul, not my call. But for me um, and, and for those around me who I, you know, share and tie weird with, um, it, goes, it goes way beyond just those simple words. Um, I hope that this has given a lot of people some things to think about, and I hope that you are considering, if you haven't yet already, getting a copy of uh, We Are Our Deeds um, by Eric Wodening yourself. I, I've recommended it a number of times in a lot of videos, and I've... Um, you know, I, I, I'm not endorsed or anything by, you know, the publisher or anything like that. So don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm seeing any sort of kickback for, for recommending it. It's just I think it really does help with people's um, approach to heathenry. And as they come into heathenry, as they start learning things, it's more than just, you know, fancy graphics on, on your wall or on your timeline or on social media. It's more than just these, you know, words that make you feel good. Um, it's, it's way more complex than that, and I think that if people take that approach, um, not to say that you know you have to go full 100% historically reconstructionist with your heathenry, but that if you delve a bit into it, and if you take some time to learn about the way things were done by our ancestors, and use it to, you know, um, I'm trying to think of a good word, but if, if you take historical heathenry, if you, if you approach heathenry from a historically based um, a pro, you know, a concept, you're, you're going to see a lot of things that if it worked back then, it can work now, and you, and, and you can apply it to a modern, uh, or, or add a modern twist to it. Um, it's what I've tried to do, you know, taking historical heathen practices and, and making, you know, adding some modern and uh, taking the modern inventions uh, and applying it there. So it works. It has worked for me. Maybe it works for you. But I am curious to know what your thoughts and what your approach is to all this. Hopefully the ramblings that I've gone on for, you know, in the last uh, 20, 30 minutes or whatever it's been have really, you know, shed some light on, on things. Again, I'm not knocking anybody um, or putting anybody or their organizations or their or their groups or anything down. If that's what you, if that's what makes it work for you, if your tribe has you know certain words that you um, have have built into your your your, your tribal through, great. If that's what makes the tribe work. Um, but it's more than that. It's yes, there's there's words to it, but it's it's more than just those singular words and, and the things behind them. It's it goes deeper than that, in my opinion. So, anyways. That's today's uh, topic of discussion, today's video, today's podcast, if you're listening to this on the, on the podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up, share the video around, uh, rate the podcast, you know, however it allows you to, share it with your friends, um, and I invite your feedback. So wherever you are listening or watching this, um, head down into those respective areas and let me know what you think. Don't forget to head down on the YouTube channel into the description area of all my videos. There's a link tree link posted there for uh, you guys to check out and see all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings through um, Teespring uh, merchandise. You can become a patron on Patreon. Follow me on my social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. It's all in the link tree. So thank you all again for listening, watching today's video. Hail. And I'll see you all in the next one.